the top. Make sure the two pieces are flush at the bottom before pushing them through the saw and be sure to stop at the line you've drawn. Now line up your line to the blade by flipping your jig piece perpendicular with the fence. Next, line up your fence with the line you've drawn and proceed to cut to the first cut you've made. The next order of business is to cut your jig down to a size easily located on your fence. For instance, if the jig lines up at 10 and 3 16 inches to get the perfect side that you want, then round off your fence at 10 inches, flip your work around so that the truck box side is against the fence, and then cut the 3 16 inches off the jig. Next, make notations of the dimensions on your jig so the next time you build a similar box, you will know exactly what size rectangle to cut so you will get two sides out of just one pass through the saw with your fence set at exactly 10 inches. Now that we have our sides, we must take our compass and mark a semicircle at the top and sand it with this, this sander. To sand our rounded top, simply lay the side on the table of the disc sander and roll it back and forth until you've removed the desired amount down to your markings. Be sure the table is set at 90 degrees to ensure an accurate seat between your front and side pieces. When bending wood, using a series of equally spaced curves, we cut our wood within a paper thin layer from the top. We must first take our side piece along with the piece that is going to be our front piece and mark where the two pieces begin to pull away. At that point we will make a mark to make our first curve. Use the same process in marking your second curve after your first curve has been completed and this will be the spacing for the remaining curves. your blade height to just below the top of your work. Now make your series of curves and look how easy wood bending really is.
that we have our front curves cut and sides finished, line your side up to the soon to be finished front board and mark where you will be cutting your angled cut. To determine the angle of the cut, just resort back to the angle in which you cut your first side piece. If you recall, that piece was 14 degrees. Now simply tilt your blade to 14 degrees and proceed to cut your front piece at the mark you've just made. Be sure your front piece is face down when making the cut. See how nicely they fit together? Using the same degree of pitch, let's now cut our bottom piece to the line which we are about to mark on the piece we have designated as our bottom. As you can see, our enclosure is starting to take shape. The final piece to our project is our back, which is simply a straight cut on all four sides. Before we assemble our box, we must first cut all holes in our fronts for speakers and sides for terminal cups. Here is our box side, which we will now drill out the hole for the terminal cup. This wood auger is the best tool I've found to cut through MDF. Insert the bit in your drill press. Next, take a scrap piece of wood and insert it beneath your side to protect your, both your bit and your drill press table. Be sure to clamp your work down and center your auger on your mark. Now at low speed proceed to drill down through your work. Isn't that a clean cut? Now let's take our circle jig and attach it to the base of our router. Remember now when you're routering a hole you will choose the hole half the distance from the blade for the actual size you want. For instance a 7 inch hole re will require your pilot screw to be 3 and 1 half inches away from the blade. <laughs> 